Hello, Santiago here with Healing Humanity Ministries. This is blog 13, I believe. Um, I have something on my mind that I wanted to put out there. And so, well, I don't have any notes or anything, so we're going to have to kind of see how this goes. And it's kind of strange talking to uh, a camera. <laughs> but... One of the things that I like best about the home church, about my my experience in the home church, I should say, is what I have seen. Um, there's a higher level of accountability. You know, there's not much accountability at an institutional or a building church. What I mean by accountability is you go from, you know, service to service, week to week, and nobody asks you before you leave, hey, you know, what are you going to do to have Christ in your life this week? And so right then you're kind of, you know, you have to kind of consider how am I going to bring Christ into my life this week? And then the next you know, throughout the week, there's there's not a lot of people or a lot of churches that check in with you during the week to see how you're personally doing, not just a, a bulk email to say, hey, hope everybody's, you know, but, you know, a real honest check in. See, how you doing? How's your walk? Can I pray for you for anything? And then the next week when you meet again, um, more formally, informally, formally. Uh, you know, we talked to each other about how was your week? What did you experience? You know, did you do what you thought you were going to do? And not only that, so I really appreciate that. But also, I really value... Um, not, not, not only do we check in with each other, but we also check each other. And that is a really hard part for me with coming to Christianity as a true believer was having people in my life. There we go. Having people in my life that were like, hey, you know, I, I heard what you said back there. And, you know, I just want to see where you're at with this because I just want to make sure that, you know, you heard what you said back there. Um, you know, we all slip, we all have our faults and our weaknesses for sure, but life changes when you're held accountable to people that you respect. Now I've been held accountable to a lot of people before, but not many that I respected, not many that I knew and understand their personal walk. So, and we check each other, you know, and I really appreciate that. Even my wife has learned to check me. So at, you know, the age of 48, she'll check me. And she knows, we use the word check. Um, hey, you know, when I'm, when I'm getting ready to throw a fit, she's like, hey, just checking. Where's Jesus right now? What? <clears throat> Frustration melts. Because I'm a true believer. And so when she says that, I'm like, you're right. I don't have Jesus right now. I got to back things up. So when I'm yelling at the kids or about to yell at the kids or I'm about to get angry about something, you know, even my kids will check me and I ask them to because that's, you know, I, they need to honor me and respect me. But if I'm getting, I'm about to go off on them um, because I'm not that kind of father anymore. Because I don't want my father going off on me. So when I'm about to, my kids need to check me. Hey, Dad, where's your Jesus right now? Ooh, powerful. For me, it's powerful. I put it first. I truly put it first. So, and that's, you know, when I see a brother of mine um, or a sister 
and I come to your house and I start to see beer signs hanging up and, you know, you're keeping that fifth of tequila out there on the counter now and, you know, it's got its own little area and the glasses are by it, you know? Well, what's your what's your false idol right now? What you putting before Jesus? Where are you at with that? Better check yourself before you wreck yourself. <clears throat> Take a sip. Yeah, so I'm going to try and not, I don't like to edit these things. I don't like to really pause them either and contemplate. So either ride with me or, or don't, but it's all about getting checked. Uh, back in the day when somebody checked me, man, it was, it was, psh, it's different. It was different, you know? So I had to, I had to brainwash myself. I had to rethink life. I had to relearn how to get checked. And it depends who's checking me too. You know, if you're a non-believer, you don't need to be checking me, but I appreciate it. Everybody can check me, even a Buddhist or Hindu or Muslim or anybody check me i'm getting out of line from what you know about christ check me but it's hard you know it's it's hard getting checked i i've i've, I've checked my mom a couple times i start checking people if i hear people say omgs and jc's and throwing them around I'm going I'm to check you. I'm going to be respectful. But I'm going to be like, yo, you calling his name. You going to say anything else to him? <laughs> and that's, to me, you know, that's one of the dangers of saying, oh, you know, oh, OMG, you know, just making that your 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 go-to. Why why did you make that your go-to? Because somebody else that you envied or heard it from, they made it their go-to. And you kind of liked how the reaction came. So now it's your go-to. It's not a good go-to. It's a very powerful. And listen, this this is my reason. This is my reason why. Because if you're going to OMG and JC and GDs, and you know where I'm going with all these, if you're going to do that, um, even not the not, not even like a swear word, but just saying it. Imagine your friend calling you and as soon as you answer they hang up and they do it again and again and again and then they call you and they just say hey bless this meal and they hang up and then they call you and hang up and call you and hang up and call you and hang up that's essentially to me what you're doing, what what we, what I was doing to the Lord, you know. And uh, you keep calling him and not responding. One of these days you're gonna call him and he's not gonna answer. But you know we gotta if we're gonna be true Christians. If we're going to fight this battle, if we're going to be in it to win it, we have to start checking ourselves. We have to start checking each other. And more than anything, we have to be okay with being checked. You have to be okay with being checked. Leave your defense. Drop it. You don't need a defense anymore. Leave it alone. That's what you have Jesus for. That's what you have spirits for around you in the spirit realm. Let all that work itself out. Drop your defense. Drop your shields. You don't have to be that tough anymore. It was really hard for me to learn that lesson. To stop having to try and be tough. I envy people who I I knew in my younger days, either on the street or at school or wherever. And they, you know, kind of appeared to be that weaker 
person, that that quiet person, that shell person, they're usually reading a book or doing their homework. I envy, I think even back then, back in my younger days, back in my foolish days, I think I envied them then too. But I just had no idea how to restart. So, uh, yeah, be careful what you say and, uh, yeah, that's a wrap. Blessings. Peace.